Welcome to our presentation. What we're going to show is built around audio recorded ethnographic interviews with people living with addiction who engage in activities loosely categorized under harm reduction. In Ontario, there are site vans that deliver supplies and safe injection sites are now being established in community health centers. The audio interviews are heard over video footage, which we've recorded of local scenes, although not of the speaker. There are a couple of reasons I've conceptualized the film this way. Mostly they have to do with problems of representation, the way it seems that we're getting the real person when we see someone talking, and the way that person comes to stand and speak for their group. I want to insist on a distance between what we get of someone in a film and their actual lived existence, and also on the distance between the individual stories we hear and some general construct of the figure of the addict. The idea is that by building a disjunction between sound and image, we are underscoring the nature of filmic representation and also preserving potential by way of the not shown. The clip that follows is our first. We are at the beginning of this project for which part of the inspiration is Eugene Reichel and William Garriott's conceptualization of addiction trajectories. We've asked Eugene for his take on this and we have a brief discussion with him right after the clip. Uh, I have a good doctor. I've been with since I was a small kid, so she kn she's known like everything, and like uh, she did a lot to help me along the way uh, by forcing me to get blood tests. You know, so it's like I kind of always knew that it was clean because I'm uh, I'm still getting tested every six months. You know, a friend of mine, I was, we were talking about safe injection sites. And I said, yes, there should definitely be one in Canada. She goes, no, there shouldn't be. Like my, my kid lives in Canada. I don't want my kid exposed to that. I looked at her, I said, Megan, you know that little like housing complex right behind your apartment building? She goes, yeah, like, half my shit came from there. What? The drugs are there. You can't stop that. You know, they're around your kids and your kids are gonna get into them. The only thing that you can do is not really push it, you know, and it's like it doesn't have to be this massive ordeal. Mm -hmm. Like, just try to help somebody. Yeah. Like, relax, man. And for a lot of a lot of people, you know, they'll sit there and be like, yes, we need this. We need to help people. We need to save lives. But I don't want to hear. I don't want to see it. And that's a really terrible attitude because it's, you know, the city tries to do something. They can't find any space to do it, so they have to put it in a tent, yeah. which is, like, that sucks, but at least they're trying. Yeah. You know, they're trying to make a new program, trying to start something to help people, which is awesome. But then I actually don't understand the community backlash, and it's like, you can't have this. Like, you're just, you're just out there, and you're, just, you're letting people do the drugs, and people are going to do them. So don't, don't say those things to me. And it's like... You, you already made them illegal and people are still using them like there's no tomorrow. So you think that you say, like, you think people care about what you say about their drug use? Like, no, they don't care at all. They're going to do it. Yeah. You'd be surprised where people are and people are using, like, they're everywhere. And it's like, you look at Canada, it's like this quiet little suburb. And it's like the, the needle drop-offs at the fire stations, well, the one near my house was pretty much always full and we weren't filling it. So there is other people around, you know, using. It's, you just don't see it, right. you know. Like around here, there's a lot, you know, there's, there's a lot more people and it's a lot denser. So, you know, you're almost forced to see it there. You know, like in a place like Canada, it's very easy to hide. You know, you can squirrel away and no one will ever find you because right. there's nothing going on, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, it was really tough. Uh, getting the site van to go out because it's the mobile uh, service for addicts. And they have a nurse and they give you clean equipment and all that kind of stuff. Great service, great people. Um, super sketchy the first couple times you call them because they just, you, the number is like 2323232. Very easy to remember, mm -hmm. uh, which is good. But you call it and then somebody just answers, hello? Ah. Hi, um, I'm I'm looking for uh, the auto Ottawa site van, like the needle exchange program. Yeah, no problem. This is us. Like, <gasps> okay. like, can you just answer like, hey, Ottawa site van? Like, <laughs> oh, don't make me go through that pain. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and it's like I'd only like been in the van like like once, you know, where it's like uh, my my friends had just gone to the van and then they're, they're like, I was like, oh, like, where do you get all this equipment? And they're like, well, you get it from the van. And they're like, oh, okay, like I need to, you know, I always took the initiative, excuse me, took the initiative to learn things on my own because mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just kind of like that. Like I, I like to take care of myself. Like I don't need somebody to do it for me. So I'm like, it's like, show me what I need to do. And then, you know, I, I can, we take turns, right? You know, it's like, oh, I, I hit up the van last week. It's your turn this week and he'll, he'll go after that kind of like taking up the garbage you know <laughs> but uh but yeah and it's like i'd been in the van once and normally like they only really like to like deal with like one person at a time so like my buddy calls him he goes up and he's like yeah i'm tyler and they're like okay jump in like do you mind if my buddy comes and like look in the back start shuffling some things around like yeah, yeah it's cool it's cool but no uh like this lotus flower i got it done a couple weeks ago I'm going to get it all filled in with blue. Yeah. It's going to be different shades of blue. That's cool. But like the blue like the blue lotus flower is like a symbol of like growth and stuff and like growth and knowledge and um and it's always shown in mid bloom because it's it's supposed to represent like the coming out of uh, the like the mud mm. really because that like the lotus flower grows in really bad conditions but it's such a beautiful flower mm-hmm. like it, it there has to be like that you know thick soupy mud you know that's gonna like suck your foot in you know and get stuck <laughs> like that kind of mud like like really like poor conditions this mm-hmm. flower comes out and and blooms so it's it's like my hands did all the the, the dirty work they did every, all those bad things and all those on my hands so my hand is like the root for the flower and it gro- it's growing out of that you know it's like why well, i got this uh this was like this crazy little design i was just fucking around with and i actually put it here um and did it myself and i made sure it was all these like scratchy shitty lines and because it's supposed to have that like ragged look Mm -hmm. and i put it here because i always use like this vein or here but normally i this is normally here before i'd ever use i have to see this and it's a reminder to myself it's like are you choosing love are you choosing fear are you loving yourself right now or are you just afraid Mm -hmm. are you running from something you know So thank you so much uh, for inviting me to uh, comment on, on this uh, really fascinating uh, project. I really enjoyed uh, watching the clip. It sort of evokes a couple of um, a couple of ideas, a couple of reactions that I wanted to share with you. And so the, the first of those is simply that of um, uh, the, the way in which uh, um, there's a sort of in, in your selection and in the words that Matt is speaking, a kind of uh, refusal to depict him as um, abject in any way or as, um, you know, someone who's on this kind of downward trajectory, hitting rock bottom, you know, all these kind of, these, these sort of uh, stereotypes that we have around, uh, around drug use and addiction. My other main observation is that I thought that, um, uh, and and this one is quite uh, interestingly uh, highlighted both by some of the things that Matt says uh, and the uh, images that you display, um, and that is that this seems to be a very particular kind of a space um, for being a, a, a drug user or an addict in, um, and I'm thinking specifically of when he talks about uh, dropping the uh, needles in the, the drop box uh, and finding that it's full almost always. And then coming to the awareness of, of that there's lots of other people both using and using these services here, but he doesn't know who they are, or at least that's how he kind of presents it. Eugene, thank you so much. And thanks to the organizers and everyone participating in the Displacements Conference.